Hello, I'm Jenny Fern and welcome to my library. I am a chaotic neutral mechanical engineer who's really into permaculture and wants to talk about books. So let's talk about books. Today I would like to do a hyper specific, slightly unhinged book recommendation video. I don't really get requests for book recommendations. I know there's not a ton of y'all, but I would love, love if on any video you put down what recommendation you want specific unhinged i'm not i don't want to be afraid i don't want to fear for my life or anything i just want something fun to look at and to try to recommend you something so today i've asked ChatGPT for specific and unhinged book recommendation requests i will say they're a little bit more hinged than what i wanted but we're gonna go with it i think we should just start i'm going to have to pick them out of my shelves number one a science fiction to devour while floating in a sensory deprivation tank with ambient electronic music playing and neon lights flickering in the darkness i have a recommendation my recommendation for that is going to be snow crash by Neil Stevenson. This is a cyberpunk novel. This features a world with virtual reality. It has a pizza delivery character, somebody who sketches around town. There's hackers, there's neon lit streets. I read this a long time ago, so the details are a little hazy, but I do recall it being really fun, just an adventure basically. So this is what I recommend for that. The next recommendation request is a book to immerse oneself while attending a masquerade ball in a grand dilapidated mansion where the echoes of the past whisper secrets in the shadows. I will admit I'm not a big masquerade ball dilapidated mansion girly, but I do have one book that kind of comes to mind and it's gonna be a weird one. <laughs> it has nothing to do with masquerades, is not as serious as this prompt is probably looking for, but, and that book is The Crooked Bannister, a part of the Nancy Drew series. This just, I remember it having a creepy staircase and there is a mystery and it's a little weird. <laughs> it's a little weird. This is really not what this prompt is looking for but again there is a mansion it's a weird mansion it's a creepy mansion so this is what i recommend okay so third nature poetry collections to explore while wandering through an enchanted forest at twilight with fireflies illuminating the pages and the scent of moss in the air i don't have a recommendation for this but I want a recommendation for this. So please, in the comments, put a recommendation for a nature poetry collection that will give that beautiful, wonderful forest vibe. I would love that if you could provide that for me. I do have one recommendation though. It is a nonfiction book, Gathering Moss. Specifically, the scent of moss in the air. I mean, how can you go wrong with Gathering Moss? It, this is a complete love letter to moss. It is nonfiction. It is excellent, excellent. Okay, I'm back. I'm back. I'm better than ever. Then we have literary fiction novels to dissect while picnicking in a graveyard surrounded by weathered tombstones and the rustling of autumn leaves. I have two books for this. One is not really a literary fiction book, but it does take place in a graveyard, and that is graveyard book. This is probably the most ideal book for this prompt because very tombstone, very autumn. I think this is the vibe, but I also have another one. The other book that I have for this prompt is Idaho by Emily Ruskovich. This is literary fiction and it does give those very like nature, sometimes fall, sometimes winter, sometimes spring, but it is spooky. There are elements of this book that are, they're not haunted. They are very rooted in reality, but they feel 
spooky. The next recommendation, I would also love to hear your recommendations because mine don't entirely fit the description, and that is a sci-fi short story anthology to read while navigating a labyrinthine underground bunker with each twist and turn revealing a new narrative dimension. So basically all I have for this are sci-fi anthologies. That's all I could really think of. I have nothing where I can think of like an underground bunker, but I like the vibes. It's definitely something I see a lot in movies. Was I just watching? There's a plane. I feel like it's just purely an action movie. Oh. There's a hummingbird. For the sci-fi anthologies, I have Daughters of Earth by Judith Merrill. This is a really wonderful science fiction anthology of three of Judith Merrill's shorter novellas, longer short stories, and they all feature women prominently. It's really a gem, honestly. I also have The Martian Chronicles by Ray Bradbury which is an interconnected series of short stories, which were basically put together to be more of a novel, but do also stand well on their own. I adore this. They are all about the colonization of Mars. Classics to rediscover while exploring an abandoned amusement park where faded rides and overgrown pathways evoke a sense of eerie nostalgia. So when I think of eerie nostalgia, I have two, <laughs> I have two things that are super, super different, but I feel like they both kind of fit. And one is Carrie by Stephen King. I feel like it counts as a classic at this point. Super eerie and super nostalgic. Very wrapped up in high school life in the past. And... I also have another piece which will have your childhood nostalgia wrapped up into it and I feel like the overgrown pathways and a little bit of that amusement park. I think this book fits. It's The Secret Garden by Frances Hodgson Burnett. This is a classic children's novel about a sickly boy and a secret garden. Can't say I loved this book. It was all right. Next, a nature memoir to cherish while foraging for wild mushrooms in a misty ancient woodland, feeling the pulse of life beneath each step. I feel like this is perfect. This is The Gift of the Deer by Helen Hoover. This is indeed a nature memoir told by Helen Hoover about her experience living in a cabin in the woods in the snow and encountering these deer, this family of deer and her experiences with them. This is one of the best books that I've read this year. This next book I'm a little uncertain about, but it's what I could think of. Literary fiction to unravel while trapped in a time loop, experiencing the same day over and over again in a surreal Groundhog Day-esque scenario. You know, while reading that, I did think of one other book. I did just think of Dolphin Hotel. What is that book called? Dance, Dance, Dance. That's what it is. There is that surreal aspect. There is kind of a sense of experiencing the same day. I feel like that is maybe a better recommendation for the prompt, but I did not like Dance, Dance, Dance. So what I am going to recommend is Finna, which is a short sci-fi novella that is very playful and also quite surreal. So that is what I'm going to recommend. Next we have sci-fi dystopias to escape into while wandering through an urban wasteland where skyscrapers loom like monoliths and the air crackles with static. I have two books for this. I have The Fifth Wave by Rick Yancey. This is a shit hits the fan kind of novel. I read this several years ago and I really, really was into it more than I expected. I loved this and I definitely haven't continued on with the series because I hear it gets really bad and the movie is also terrible. <laughs> so I would say the book was shockingly very good and I was really into it. And it does have that apocalyptic 
feeling. The other book I have is Annihilation by Jeff Vandermeer, and this is a science fiction story, and it is about a region that has been taken over by this like mysterious force, this alien force, which brings these huge like growths of life. It, it affects the life within this region. And so there are these people who are going to explore that mysterious region. So the idea of a an urban wasteland, but that has just been covered by growth, you know? I have lit a candle here. Because it is spooky rainy right now, it has been so rainy. It has been raining for like four days. <laughs> My backyard is so flooded. My little dog has to poop in like five inches of water. <laughs> a classic to revisit while stargazing from a rooftop garden in a futuristic metropolis, contemplating the enduring relevance of timeless tales beneath the glow of neon constellations. For this, I have The Metamorphosis by Franz Kafka. And one of the reasons why I think this is so relevant is the the themes in this book, I think will carry through to this world where we're in a futuristic metropolis. I'm imagining it to be somewhat dystopian. This book really captures the feelings of existing in that hyper-capitalist world. The next book I have is Nature Essays to Ponder While Exploring an Abandoned Industrial Complex Reclaimed by Nature Where Rusting Machinery and Tangled Vines Coexist in a Haunting Tableau. I have for this Pilgrim at Tinker Creek by Annie Dillard. This is wonderful, wonderful nature writing, and I feel like because it is still rooted in our modern world, it, it does feel very modern. When I was first reading it and I didn't know what this book was, I just picked it up because I was interested in it at some point, and I had, again, I had no idea what it was about. When I was first reading it, I thought it might have been a science fiction novel. A sci-fi epic to lose oneself while navigating a virtual reality simulation where the boundaries between the digital and physical world blur and merge. This is not a sci-fi epic, but it is a book that comes to mind with this prompt, and that is Vert, a book that I didn't quite enjoy, so I don't have a copy of it, but it does go into that kind of like, what is reality? Like what the f is going on? I feel like that could kind of be okay. I don't have a better example than Snow Crash for a sci-fi epic with virtual reality. That one's probably a better suited for this prompt, but I already used it, so. Number 13, classics to reinterpret while attending a secret literary salon in an underground speakeasy where forbidden ideas flow freely amidst the clink of glasses and murmur of subversive conversation. If you have recommendations for a prompt like this, this just speaks to me. And the book that I have for this is The Man Who Was Thursday by G.K. Chesterton. This is about a secret society of anarchists, and this features one of, I think it's a secret society of anarchists. Now I'm double guessing. Um, I know that there's anarchists, and I know that there's a secret society, and they're named after like the days of the week, and so there was a guy named Thursday who is a part of this. It has been quite a while since I read this, but I adored this when I read it. So it is it is time for a reread to refresh what what the heck goes on in this book. A nature guidebook to peruse while camping in a bioluminescent forest where glowing fungi and shimmering insects illuminate the pages like a magical field guide. The Insect Guide, which is just an insect guidebook, 
and it has these really wonderful illustrations or um, yeah look at that isn't that wonderful and it has just incredible information as well this doesn't have any like magical qualities to it the insects themselves are you know quite alien and fun in my opinion and there's this beautiful page of like mouth parts and stuff which i think gives it that kind of wonderfully magical quality so this is the insect guide. I have not read this, but I have used it for illustrations and such. A novel to dive into while lounging in a bathtub filled with rose petals, indulging in a sensory escape from the everyday. Did I say sensory? I mean sensory. I have Howl's Moving Castle for this by Diana Wynne Jones, and I just thought if we're thinking of a sensory escape from the everyday, this is quite imaginative and will take you away. I think this will take you away. It's been kind of a while since I've read this and I am a little bit fuzzy on the plot as compared to the movie version, which does differ in some pretty significant ways, but um, it is a wonderfully magical story and it has some pretty cool stuff going on. A children's picture book to enjoy while hosting a tea party for stuffed animals in a secret garden with fairy lights twinkling and soft music playing in the background. For this, I have Bear Party by William Penet Dubois, and this has a bunch of koala bears in a masquerade ball. And we start we start with the koalas in their natural habitat and then we have their little masquerade which some of it is a little bit offensive because we do have them dressing up as um like certain nationalities which could be a little bit troublesome but yeah so here we have like an example of them dressing up like like different bears this was a book that i read when I was a child and I donated a copy or something at some point. So I picked up a copy again just because I thought about it so much. Number 17, a children's fantasy novel to lose oneself in while building a pillow fort under the stairs where imagination knows no bounds and adventure awaits every corner. From this, I don't I don't think this is like super fantasy and it's not like the most imaginative book ever, but I feel like if you're building a pillow fort under the stairs, you're going to want The Borrowers by Mary Norton. This is a children's novel about these tiny little people who live in a house and survive off of the leftovers, I would say, of the people who live in this house, and they're at risk of being found out. It's a little scary. It's a little sketch. I thought this was excellent when I read it. Next, a general fiction short story collection to delve into while soaking in a hot spring under the moonlight with steam rising and stars reflecting in the still water. Now that is very specific very specific. But what comes to mind is Vampires in the Lemon Grove by Karen Russell. This is a short story collection and I just feel like one of the stories might give this kind of hot spring moonlight vibe. I mean even Vampires in the Lemon Grove kind of maybe a little bit gives that. Karen Russell is one of my favorite authors. I think she's just excellent. She is really strong with her language, with her writing. She is an excellent literary fiction author and she has excellent short story collections. A children's adventure book to explore while camping in the backyard with the sound of crickets and the rustle of leaves providing the soundtrack to an epic quest. For this, I have The Wild Robot by Peter Brown. It has been quite a while since I've read this book, so the details are a little bit fuzzy, but there is a robot who is on an island 
and she is trying to survive. This says there is a fierce storm and a vicious bear attack, so she has to adapt to her surroundings and learn from the animal inhabitants. So I picked this because of the environment being so entrenched in nature. It just gave that backyard camping vibe. Nonfiction biography to cherish while wandering through an overgrown cemetery, tracing the footsteps of historical figures and discovering the humanity beyond the epitaphs. For this, I have an autobiography or a memoir by Jack London called John Barleycorn. I feel like I talk about this book all the time, but this is about the alcoholism that Jack London experienced, his relationship with alcohol, and his life story. This really does humanize the author that we know and love because of that humanizing quality knowing that this man who lived such a wild and full life had such deep struggles. He felt it so important to write down these struggles because he didn't want other people to experience the same pain that he did. I think really fits this idea of looking at the headstones of those who have passed and imagining them as fully fleshed out people. Then we have a fiction literary saga to get lost in while sipping mold cider by a crackling bonfire where generations of characters weave a tapestry of interconnected lives. The only book that I had come to mind was The Joy Luck Club by Amy Tan. I read this book way back in high school, so it has been ages since I've read this, and I don't recall a ton about it, but I do recall that it is about mothers and daughters, and I think there are four main stories being told, and I believe they are different families, but I'm not 100% sure if it's that or if it's different generations. But there is an overlap of generations that is key to this story, and it's why I picked it for this prompt. I do also get that kind of cozier feeling that the idea of a bonfire and cider invoke from this book. And the last book that I have to share today is for the prompt, a children's mystery novel to unravel while exploring an abandoned amusement park at dusk where echoes of laughter mingle with the whispers of forgotten secrets. For this, I have One Day at Horrorland by R.L. Stein, a part of the Goosebumps series. It is about this spooky amusement park. I do not own this book, unfortunately. I would love to. I have been looking at the shelves of the thrift stores, seeing if I can find Goosebumps again, because I haven't read a Goosebumps in a couple years because I haven't gotten my hands on them and I love Goosebumps so I would love to find this in a store one day and be able to read it again. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed these 23 recommendations. I think one of them was a call for action and not exactly a recommendation because I didn't have an answer but please if you have any recommendations for these prompts or if you have a prompt to submit yourself I would love to see that I would love to engage with you guys in giving you recommendations from my own brain and if you enjoyed this video please share it with a friend who you think would also enjoy this video and you could also like it and subscribe I will talk to you again soon.